Even though CapM is a great model, it's a great starting place for figuring out if a company is a worthy risk or not, if there's adequate compensation on that, there are a couple of things that we need to, to be aware of before diving in headfirst into using this for actually making purchasing decisions. The first of which is that CapM is that it is a measure of volatility, right? And volatility is basically how much it, it varies in relation to the overall market, is that there is a, a major downfall in that it is historical looking, okay? Is that it looks at what happened in the past. The past is not necessarily indicative of what is happening in the future. And the analogy that I commonly hear on this is it's like driving down the road looking in your rear view mirror. Okay, your rear view mirror tells you a lot about what's going to happen in the future. If it's curvy, right, it's going to say, all right, it takes this much long going that way and then that way. If it's straight, oh, I can probably remain straight. However, we know that it's really not safe to be look, looking solely at your rear view mirror and driving down the highway, right? It's not a, a safe thing to do. Same thing happens when you're looking at a stock, trying to figure out if the stock is a worthy risk or not. There could have been something very... You know, it could have been smooth sailing behind on this company, but now we're moving into rocky territory in the, in the future, and that might not be a, a great way to look at it. So that's one thing to keep in mind, okay? The second thing we need to keep in mind is in relation to companies that have a low beta, right? Low beta stocks, those especially that are coming near zero, are somewhat difficult because uh, they might not necessarily be correlated with the market, but they could still be very risky. So one of the things that we're looking at here is let's say we have a risk-free rate of 3% and let's say we have a risk premium, an equity risk premium of 6%, okay? Now beta here, the beta, if we're talking about a low beta, is that there are a number of things that are not highly correlated with the market that run betas of somewhere near zero, okay? Now, if we have a beta equal to zero, what is our I going to be here? Well, it's simply going to be 3%. It's going to be equal to the risk-free rate, okay? Because multiplying anything by zero means it's gonna be zero, so the, that return is just the risk-free rate. This creates complications, right? It's because we can invest. There are a number of things that are not highly correlated with the market, right? There's not much variation with the market. Some of those are going to be things like fine wine, fine art, automobiles. A lot of these things that sometimes people have that sell at auctions, they're not a high correlation. But if I have to hold on to art, right? Let's say I have a massive art collection and it's a very valuable collection. It's not correlated at all with the S&P 500, okay? is that that still can create major problems because that's saying, CapM is saying that my required return on this fine art is only 3%. But is my art collection the same level of risk as a U.S. Treasury? Oh no, it's not, right? U.S. Treasury is risk-free. It's not going to default. Nothing's going to happen. But my art, what could happen to my art, right? The value of my art could go down. People might not like Picasso or Monet or Renoir or whoever, right? But they can still go down in value and I could lose money on that. Or there could be a fire in the building. Uh, something else could happen, right? There's absolutely risk associated with fine art, okay? So that's the important thing to look at, especially when you're talking about low beta stocks, okay? Is that even if we have a beta near zero, that doesn't necessarily mean we have a required return near the risk-free rate, okay? Because if I have my choice between a 3% return on fine art or on U.S. Treasuries, I'm going to choose U.S. Treasuries every day because there is not that risk associated with them. Okay. Now, with that being said, is that CapM is a great starting place. Um, there's a number of other models that build off of CapM and utilize this in a, in a similar manner. Um, but it's it is a, a great starting place. Okay, as long as we are aware of some of these possible issues.